As you can probably tell, I quite like the YouTube format. I like the roughness to it, you know what I mean? If something's too well produced, too TV series -y kind of thing, then I, I can switch off from it, I can disconnect from it, but if it's relatable, you know, straight away, it, you know, it's just a bloke with a camera or whatever, then I quite like it. I mean, I think that's the beauty of YouTube is that, well, anyone can do it, isn't it? I mean, the only downside is, I suppose, really, is that, well, anyone can do it. <laughs> and there's a lot of YouTubers out there. The thing that I can't stand is that, the you know, they try and do something, they try and put information across as if they've done it before. So, yeah, you need to do this and you want to do that. And I can't stand it when you're sat there and you're thinking, you've never done this before, have you? I, it really... I don't like that. I, I think just be completely honest. So with that in mind, today I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before. You guessed it, we're balancing the rotating assembly of the engine. Now this isn't something I've done before, I'm quite happy to say it to be honest. It's all a little bit of fun. But hopefully we can add a little bit of, you know, man in shed, engineering, ingenuity into it. Um, and hopefully I get repeatable results, which is what I want to do. Now, the, the aim for this is so that uh, my pistons, wrist pins and rods combinations are all weight matched cylinder to cylinder. So therefore, they will all be within a very small tolerance of each other. And that tolerance straight away for each component I'm going to be setting at 0.1 of a gram and that's pretty normal to be honest you know the most engine builders and, and all the rest of it that you'll tend to find that that's what they aim for as well now i did think i was being clever by ordering these scales off ebay ages ago um, and at the time i thought they had a capacity of a kilogram but it turns out they don't so they're only 500 grams and the rods are over 500 grams so i'm gonna have to do end-to-end -end balancing which is why i've just knocked together this little sort of jig Uh, and the really cool thing about this jig actually is that da, 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 that's the Mark 1 uh, crank pulley tool. Aha! <laughs> I mean, you're getting it all in this video. You're getting engine building techniques, you're getting man in shed ingenuity, <laughs> you're getting crap a bit of bits, and uh, you never know, there might be a <laughs> injury thrown in there for good measure. Who knows? But, uh, so the aim is. All the parts within 0.1 of a gram. I'll start with the pistons, we'll measure them all, uh, and then we'll decide where we're going to take weight off. And there is a couple of ways you can do this. You can either measure them all uh, and then just mix and match so that each cylinder is matched. I'm not going to bother doing that because I can't measure them all together at the same time. So what I'll do is I'll just measure all four of each component. I'll see which one's the lightest, and then we'll just take weight off them all to get to the lightest one. Simple as that. Let's bash one. Right, so my pistons look good already out the factory, to be honest, and you'd, you'd like to think they would be, because they're you know, like fully CNC'd pistons. But uh, number one, 29804, number two, 29843, number three, 298 dead, number four, 29812, so they're pretty good. Straight away, I'm ignoring the hundreds um, of a decimal place, decimal point, decimal place. Straight away, numbers one, and three look good because they're both 298 and 298.04 so I'm just going to put them straight back happy with them so it's only I've got to take a smidge off number two and the smidgiest of smidges off number four so uh, I think we'll start with number two because that's got the most meat to come off and the meat I'm going to take off is just gently take it away from this tiny bit here where the wrist pin mounts up literally tiny slivers from here will not affect the strength but will allow me to lower the weight what I need to do so let's get the PPE on and let's get grinding right I've just stopped short at 298.08 and that is because for all the carbide bit on the die grinder is really good at removing material. It does leave a little bit of roughness. 
So I'm going to get the needle files out and I'm just going to take away that roughness just to finish this off. And then I'll measure and we'll try and get it exactly to 298. So 298.02 on my number two piston after I've deburred it and smoothed that off. Uh, when that's essential as well, you can't have any like high pointy bits or anything. You just, that creates heat, uh, which then creates a weakness later on. So that's all nice and smooth. 298.02, that'll go back on the pile. And I've just got to take a little bit off number four now. So that's all the pistons done. I'm not going too wild with the science to be honest, but you know, making sure I take off material from the center line of the piston, making sure I remove all the burrs and that they all measure the same now. So now I've got 298.04, 298.02, 298.04, 298.04, all 298 to be honest. Really, really happy with that. Let's get on to the wrist pins. No matter how many times that happens, every time the compressor kicks in, I shit myself. all the pins measured now and I just took material off the inside tiny little lip there I can't touch the outside bit that's the bit where the oil goes so and I can't take length off it because it has to sit inside the piston why am I still wearing these I don't know uh, but <laughs> yeah so that's all the pins done and they're all within 90 what are they 90.34 90.35 90.34 90.35 spot on so all within a hundredths of a, a gram there, so really, really happy with them. They're perfect. Now we've just got to get out the rods. Right, so the rods, as you can see, I've um, I've knocked up this jig, this jig thing. It's 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 crap to be honest. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> the problem with it, and if you've seen the the rod balance and jigs before, then they, they have bearings and they have uh, rollers which are. You know the fit inside the little and the big end pretty much exact so when you put a rod on it's in exactly the same position so that when you take it off and you put it back on again it's in exactly the same position the reading should be right getting repeatable results with this is actually quite hard to get the result for this big end i had to measure well i lost count in all honesty <laughs> i was getting all sorts of uh, problems and I had to make marks on both the screw that I'm using here and I put, had to put a centre line and some marks so I can line up every single time. And even then it's not great to be honest. So I think I'm going to muddle on with this because, well, I've, I've made it now, haven't I? I? I would look a bit of a fool if I give up on it. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be as much of a fool as actually not realising that it's crap and not giving up on it. But I, I can get repeatable results. So I know that... The big end of this rod is four five five point between three and seven and uh, to be honest that's the results I'm getting so I'll measure the other ones it'll probably take us a long time uh, and then we'll find out what the difference is and if the difference isn't that much to be honest I'll probably just leave it um, because the measuring isn't the best but if it if, if there's a noticeable difference then I'll without a doubt I'll, I'll think about removing some material you know from from the ends of here We'll see what it's like. I 
actually end up eating my own words here as it goes because it's took us a while but as soon as I now get everything lined up, the marks that I've made on the screw, um, the centre line of the rod in the cap on the centre line of this, I, I can actually get repeatable results, pretty, pretty close repeatable results. Definitely, definitely to within mm, probably 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 of a gram. I'm struggling to get the 0 0.1 because I, I can get the rods, most rods are 454.7 or 8-ish or 455.2 or 3-ish. So they're actually very, very close. They're within half a gram already. But every single time I put it on, I'm getting a fluctuation of about point. One to two on each rod, so I'm I'm not going to get it be able to like bang on perfect, but God, it'll be close. Like it'll be really close. So I think I'm going to take the lowest one, which is rod number two, uh, and for that that got four five four point six, and I'm going to take them all down to that four five four point six. I'm going to aim for that anyway. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> So I've actually been able to do that, and to be honest, it wasn't that bad in the end. It was certainly, it, it was very, very finicky. It'd be nice to have a jig that I put some time and effort into, you know what I mean? It, but <laughs> as garage mechanics goes, though, it's, it was actually all right. Um, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit that I needed to remove on three of the rods to get it down to four, five, four point six, or without, you know, close to it. So... These, I was wanting to get down to within 0.1 of a gram, but it's probably going to be within 0.2 or 3, which I can live with, let's face it. I didn't even do this the last time I put <laughs> rods in an engine, so it'll be better than that, won't it? So I think I'll, I'll take the screw further up and we'll do the little lens. We'll see how that goes. The little lens actually proven to be a bit easier. The repeatable results are, are far easier to get. I've just got to line up the brake on the screw and then line up the little end. Mm. Pretty good. I'm not even going to modify the little ends to be honest because they're pretty good out the box. I'm getting 190 uh, and up to 190.1 grams on the little ends. That's obviously using that jig uh, with the pivot point where I've put it. So that's not to say that the little ends weigh that much. That's just what they end up on that crap jig that I made. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy with that. And the big ends, you know, I got it within 0.2 of a gram. So so that'll do me, to be honest. I'm quite happy with that. I mean, as a, as a lesson in engineering science, it's quite the failure. But <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, knocking up a little DIY jig and uh, getting all the, the pistons and the pins to within 0.1 of a gram, great. The little ends, 0.1 of a gram, great. Big ends. Probably a little bit over, but I can live with that. That's no problem. It's, without a doubt, more balanced than what it was. So, uh, going forward, I think it's pretty good. And the way that I could possibly improve on this, I mean, obviously, the jig, it could be better. I could have used better scales. In all honesty, I probably could have been a better YouTuber. But let's not let that stop work making a video. So, I mean, I think I did achieve what I set out to do, to be honest. The accuracy wasn't as good as I'd like it to be on the big ends, but... Uh, the rest of it's all right, and it's certainly all better than what it was from factory. So I'm pretty happy we achieved what I need to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.